In this video, we're exploring one of the most practical and impressive tools in Power Query, fuzzy matching. We'll see how it can automatically clean up messy customer or product names, those small differences in spelling, spacing, or punctuation that often breaks lookups. Feel free to download this starter file and the solution file from the link in the video description so you can follow along this project with me or just go back and examine the Power Query M code with full documentation. I have a table here called orders, and this is a proper data table, and we can see the name in the upper left corner, orders. The problem is, as people would enter customer names, the names are not entered consistently. We have differences in the names. We can see here in all the different variations of Acme, or Globex, or Initech, Vandalay. The problem is, if I go over to this other table called customer master, I need to do a lookup to return the customer ID and the segment. The problem is the customer master has the correct version of those names. The orders has the inconsistent version of the names. So if we wanted to do something like add a column called sector and perform an X lookup. So if we tried to take this customer name and find it in this customer name column of the customer master table, comma, and return the segment, we'll close parentheses and hit enter, everything fails because none of those human entered customer names match the actual proper name in the customer master table. This is where fuzzy lookup comes in because fuzzy lookup can take this and say, hey, if I see something like Acme, then replace it with this entry for Acme in this other table. And there could be variations in spelling, casing, abbreviations. So let's get rid of this sector column. We'll bring these two tables into Power Query. So for the first one, we'll go up to data from table range. Now that we have our orders in Power Query, we'll go to the upper left corner and hit the lower part of close and load and say close and load to, and send this out as a connection only query. We don't wanna actually create another table. We already have the table. Now we'll go to customer master, do the same thing. Go up to data from table range. Now that we have these two tables in Power Query, to perform the lookup of the customer name column in the orders table and bring back the customer ID and segment columns of the customer master, we'll start with orders. And on the home ribbon, we'll hit the small arrow next to merge queries and say merge queries as new. I prefer this because I prefer not to alter the original orders table. We're going to perform a left outer join, which means I wanna keep everything from the orders table, but pull selected columns from the customer masters table. The connective tissue between these two columns is the customer name. If you notice at the bottom, it says there are zero matches, just like the X lookup has zero matches. So what we'll do is we'll check this box that says use fuzzy matching to perform the merge. And now it says there are four matches. Now we don't know what those matches are yet, but let's see if we can get that number a little higher. We'll go to the fuzzy matching options. The most important setting for fuzzy matching is called the similarity threshold. Think of it this way. Express as a percentage how much must match in order for me to make a correlation. If I were to put in 0.5, that means if half of it matches, then we'll consider it a hit. But if I were to put in 0.9, almost all of it has to match in order for it to be a hit. Likewise, if I put 1 or 100%, all of it has to match or it's not a hit. If I put in 0, then pretty much anything goes. If it's even slightly close, we'll consider it a match. So sometimes you have to play with this number. So notice if I have a 0, it's a 10 out of 10. If I type in a 1, it's a 2 out of 10. So anything between 0 and 1 expresses a fraction. The higher the number, the more it has to match. Let's start with 0.75, and it got five hits. Some other options you can work with, you can tell it to ignore the case sensitivity. If I take case sensitivity into account, I only get four hits, but if I ignore case sensitivity, I get five hits. Match by combining text parts. This would be something like if somebody put micro soft as two words, we would combine it into one word, Microsoft, and see if that matches. So if I uncheck that, I get three hits. If I check it, I get five. Now the obvious action would be to lower this threshold and get more hits. The problem with that is you could end up putting yourself into a situation where you get false positives. And to show you what I mean, let's change this to 0.3 and look at that 10 out of 10. Let's hit okay. So this creates a new query called merge one, which I'm gonna rename to corrected. Here are the columns from the original orders table. And then if I scroll over, as with any merge, we get a column of nested tables. So we still have to extract the columns that we're interested in. Since the customer name column is the same in both tables, I'm going to rename this one to old customer name. We'll go to the column nested tables and let's extract every one of these columns. There's our columns. I'm going to right click on those selected columns and move them to the beginning of the table. This way we can see this a little better. 
So here's the original names, and here's the corrected names. With our threshold set at point 3, everything seemed to work until we got to here. And you can see the old name was Vandalay Industries, but because the threshold was so low, it mistook that as Inatech Incorporated. So perhaps we need to raise the threshold to get a more precise hit. We'll go back to the source step, double click the gear, reopen our merge dialog box, and back in our fuzzy matching options, let's change this to 0.5. Now notice it says there were six out of 10 matches. Well, maybe we can find a happy medium between 0.3 and 0.5 and maybe get 0.4. And this gave us eight out of 10. Let's see what we get with that. We'll hit okay, go back to our last step. As far as not getting a false positive on Vandalay, we corrected that, but we lost the understanding of this rendition of Atme Corporation as well as this one. So there always seems to be a trade-off. You want to make it as vague as possible, but not so vague that you get false positives. So here's how we can make this process better. Back in Excel, I have another table here called Transformations. Fuzzy Match can use a Transformations table to help improve accuracy. Think of it as a pre-staged lookup of common misspellings. This table lets non-technical users add new mappings without having to go into the query. The transformation table provides custom word substitutions that Power Query applies before performing fuzzy comparisons between the text columns. In other words, it tells Power Query, treat this word or phrase as equivalent to this other word. This helps the Fuzzy Match engine correctly recognize entries that differ due to abbreviations, spelling variations, or formatting differences. In other words, if somebody notices that inna-tech failed to match, they could go into this table, add inna-tech, and say, hey, if you ever see this, it actually means inna-tech. They can then refresh the report, and that issue is corrected. The transformation table must contain two columns, a from column and a to column. The from column is the text you're trying to find in the data. The to column is the text to replace it with before the fuzzy match performs its analysis. Power Query will scan text values for any occurrences in the from column, replace them with the matching item of the to column, and then perform the fuzzy similarity scoring and threshold comparison. The benefits of this transformation table, it will boost the matching accuracy on known naming variations. It reduces false positives where it thinks something is one thing, but it's not. It also reduces false negatives. This is things that would just get missed completely. So let's bring this transformations table into Power Query. We'll go back to our corrected query go to the source step and double click the gear. In the fuzzy matching options, when we set the similarity threshold to 40%, we were getting eight out of 10 hits and all eight of those hits were correct. But let's scroll down in the options and for transformation table, we'll point it to the transformations query. Notice now we have a 10 out of 10 success rate. We'll hit okay, go to the last step in the query. Note that every row from the old customer name was matched properly to the new customer name. This doesn't mean that the transformation table will solve all of your problems, but it will greatly increase the accuracy of the fuzzy match engine. Let's go ahead and load this out as a proper table. Now, as I said, the transformation table won't solve all your problems. So let's create a scenario where with all this in place, it still fails, and then look at a way we can identify those failures. So let's go back to orders and I'll add a new entry. In my orders table, I've added a million dollar sale for the customer name BCTI. In my customer master table, I have that account set up as Bailey Computing Technologies Incorporated. We'll go back to the corrected output table, right click refresh, and we had no match in the customer master table. Let's go back to the corrected query, right click edit, and let's add a new column. We'll go up to add column, custom column, and we'll create a new column called match flag. And match flag says, examine the customer ID column and see if it is not equal to null. We'll hit OK. Let's move that match flag to the beginning so we can see this more easily. Any row where a customer ID was returned means there was a match, so the match flag is true. But anywhere where we failed to discover a matching item, customer ID displays a null, that gives us a false. So if you wanted at this point, if you had hundreds of thousands of entries and maybe two or 3% of them did not get matched, you could then filter this for false so that you could output that as a report and then make the adjustments manually to those transactions. I'm going to remove that filter. Let's go to home, close and load, update our table. Earlier in the video, I said one of the great things about the transformations table was that it allows the user to go in and add or remove entries from the table and do this in Excel where they're comfortable. Then they can just right click refresh the report and get an improved output. 
So if we know that BCTI is going to be a common entry and that needs to match to Bailey Computing Technologies Incorporated, I can just add that to the transformations table, go back to my report, right click refresh, and now we have a hit. Here are some performance tips when working with fuzzy matching. Fuzzy matching is very powerful, but it's not folding friendly, which means it runs in memory rather than pushing that work to the source. If you're not clear on what I mean by folding friendly, check out my query folding video linked in the video description if you wanna see one of the most important facets of Power Query when it comes to improving performance. This means for large data sets, consider pre-cleaning the text like trim, remove punctuation before you do this merge. Also, try to keep your transformation tables concise for best speed. Put what you need in that table, but if there are circumstances that are very unlikely to occur, consider leaving those out. So there you go. You've just built an intelligent matching solution that can learn over time. Be sure to experiment with different thresholds and mappings until you find your perfect balance of accuracy and automation. Let me know what you think about fuzzy matching in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.